Ashton Gate is a first division stadium that only 17 months ago was hosting first division football. But relegation in successive seasons and a poor start to this season means that City are now closer to Division 4. The loss of players like Jerry Gow and Tom Ritchie has led to a reshaped side, but this lineup still contains six players with experience of first division football. They include Scotsman Jerry Sweeney, one of City's longest serving players, today making his 400th league appearance for them. And what a contrast to this quartet, all of whom are making their league debuts for Preston, having been signed in the last seven days. From left to right, John Kelly from Tranmere Rovers, Tommy Booth and Gary Buckley from Manchester City, and Barry Dunn from Sunderland. So, in typical Tommy Doherty style, a Preston team with plenty of new names and a very positive 4-2-4 formation. The referee, Mr. Les Schapter from Torquay, and it's Preston in the white shirts who kick off. They'll be attacking from right to left, with only six points out of the last 24. It's essential that this new-look team blends together very quickly. That's not a particularly promising start. Paul Stevens, promising new young right-back, little throw for Bristol City. McIntyre conceding another. Tommy Doherty just above the gangway there in the stand in his 20th year as a manager and back where his career as a player started with Preston North End. Edwards lay off, finding Aitken. And again, Whitehead reveling in that space down the city left. But what a good tackle by Coleman, the Preston captain. Whitehead, persistent. Mabbott. Whitehead again. Played forward and a good ball which Jimmy Mann is on the end of. The goalkeeper's committed himself and is in danger here. But luckily for Preston, Anderson was on hand to clear. Harford wins it back. Greater stuff now from Bristol City. Well, the shot at the end, disappointing. But a good build-up with Whitehead prominent then for Bristol City. The goalkeeper committing himself. And when the cross came in from the left, Anderson was on hand to clear. Oscar has the skill to be Henderson well. And Aitken. Hey, measured build up this from Bristol City. Whitehead again in space. And look at that pace. A fine cross too. And really, that proved how Whitehead could be so effective going down the left-hand side. A good cross to the far post, aimed at Harford. And as well for Preston, the Tommy Booth was the man on the end of it. Close to the goalkeeper. <laughs> well, he nearly bounced over Musker's head then. He got it at the second attempt. Like a tear for Preston. The bounce playing it straight into the path of Bruce. But a fine tackle by Stevens. A little unlucky with the clearance. Here's Aitken. And Whitehead coming deep to receive it. Hay on his outside if he needs him. And he does. Whitehead again. Mabbott. Across to cover is O'Riordan. That was aimed at Harford. And a good cross too. Oh, and then Litchfield did so well. Ball pulled back beautifully by Kevin Mabbott. And when the shot came in, Litchfield seemed to be going the wrong way, but changed his flight, and that was a very good save. And here's Kelly. Well, Tommy Doherty says he's got as much pace as another former Tramia winger, Steve Coppel. And he had pace then, but uh, perhaps his technique let him down. Bristol City just can't get the ball away. Buckley. Rodgers with uh, an old-fashioned clearance, but straight to O'Riordan. Here's Dunn. Bruce, two men for Preston inside the penalty area. Bruce goes it alone, though. Oh, and it nearly crept under Muller's body. Good skill, that by Alex Bruce. Took on the defenders, 
the shot into that muddy patch just in front of the Bristol City goalkeeper and it looked as though the ball might get through but he dived on it and made a good save again a bouncing ball off this wet pitch posing problems for the Preston defenders but Clark covering well and here's Kelly and Hay wins the throw off him And O'Riordan was just using his elbow then to hold off Mabbott. So Bristol City's free kick. And uh, Rogers has come forward, but it's gone left for Whitehead. He really has got some pace and a good ball too, and a fine effort coming in from Kevin Mabbott. Well, the best attack of the game, no doubt. The free kick played out to Whitehead on the left. Good speed, the cross flat along the ground. Mabbott poked at it first time, and over the bar it went. What we have now with the spectacles, and Roy Hudson, his assistant manager, inherited a lot of problems when they came to Bristol City, and they finally get a difficult job to clear them. And missing it completely. And the referee's whistle brings to an end what was, frankly, a disappointing first half. Bristol City nil, Preston North End nil, and one of the few players who enlivened the proceedings was this man, Clive Whitehead, recently brought back into the side to give them width. His pace, ability to beat men, and ability to cross the ball well was a constant threat, and City will be hoping he can improve on that in the second half. So Bristol City to get this second half in motion, both they and Preston relegated last season, and both seemingly having problems readjusting to third division football. But a good start, it nearly broke for Harford, McAteer with the clearance. Both sides, in fact, are currently in the bottom four in the third division table. If they don't get more men forward than they did in the first half, they might well stay there for a while too. Here's Mabbott. Very hard to win the corner, and does so. So again, David Rogers. Six foot two and 15 stone, a frightening looking build, comes forward for this city corner. Taken by Whitehead. Too close to the keeper, perhaps. Oh, and the keeper made a terrible mistake, and Coleman was on hand to whack the ball clear, but in fact the linesman's flag was raised instantly, so a foul on Peter Litchfield or even handball. This is Bruce. Now Clark, former well, Manchester United player, little soon of him in the first half. And a good layoff then by Buckley, showing some nice touches, I must say, in this game. Here's McAteer. Buckley again, intelligent positioning. Helped out by Bruce, but uh, Stevens back for Bristol City. certainly not uh, allowing the City defenders to dwell on the ball and Stevens clearance going off done Bristol City's throw Abbott holding off McAteer here's Musker now Aitken did well under pressure Whitehead surely the main source of problems to Preston if City can only get a better service to him Here's Jimmy Mann. This looks promising. Oh, a fine effort. And Mann making room for himself well then. Whitehead again, the instigator of that good move by Bristol City. Mann making room for the shot, which was only just over the Preston bar. And that free kick for Bristol City will enable Preston to make a change. John Anderson, who was doubtful before the match with an injury and who collected another one in the first half, obviously uh, feeling the effects of that knock, he'll come off. And Mike Farrelly, 19 years old, who was in the team until the four recent signings, takes his place. Well, the MT space is telling the story, and the gate, only 5,389, the lowest league crowd of the season, 
a long, long way Bristol City have come from uh, the days in the 1930s when Preston, today's visitors, set a record attendance for Ashton Gate of over 43,000. Harford, nice control, finds Mabbott. There's Musker, Stevens wide on the right. And he couldn't make the cross, and Harford had come across to provide the man for him. But that's good control. Now Whitehead, the ball just spinning away at the vital moment. Kelly for Preston. Sweeney across to cover. There's Tommy Booth. Mabbott really arriving to make life difficult for Booth, but that's an excellent clearance, and it's put Buckley in the clear. And what a good effort! Well, that was intelligent thinking by Buckley. A great ball from the back by Tommy Booth over the heads of the defenders. Buckley quickly onto it. He spotted Muller slightly off his line, hit the ball on the half volley, and it was only just wide. 20 minutes to go then in uh, this game, which has seen neither goalkeeper in any serious danger, except perhaps from their own defenders, as Coleman almost emphasised then. Sweeney beaten by the bounce, but not Rogers. Here's Kelly. Oh, that's not a bad effort either from Kelly. Well, the first flash of the kind of skill that Tommy Doherty bought this young man from Tramir Overs for. A good left-footed shot, only just over the crossbar. So as we move into the final quarter of an hour, one wonders whether either side will take more risks with the incentive of three points for a win. And it's very much on the home side, of course, Bristol City. They lost their last home game to Walsall last Saturday, and they've taken only one point from the last nine at stake. Firmly in the bottom four, and really needing a win to inspire their dwindling crowds. Here's McAteer. And it seems that Preston, anyway, are content with one point. And the crowd reacting with the slow hand clap. I'm sure of Preston, but they can't be terribly happy with their own size performance either. Now done for Preston. Well, he's kept his feet well, and the referee waves play on. Here's Bruce. Kelly, unmarked on the edge of the box. All good skill by Alex Bruce. Kelly is still in the centre. He's done crosses. It comes to Kelly, and he really could have marked his debut then with a goal. Well, you have to feel sorry for John Kelly. It was a fine cross from the left by Dunn. Kelly was unmarked, the goal at his mercy, but the new player turned it over the crossbar, and that could be Preston's final hope of a win. Mabbott. Driven in, but uh, McAteer clears. Here's Musker. Fullback Stevens wanting it inside the box. Ooh, it nearly reached him too. What a good header away that was by Booth. Bruce to Clark. It's a fine ball too. McAteer just helping it on for Bruce. Buckley in the middle and Kelly arriving quickly too. Oh, good skill by Alex Bruce. Oh, and he's still going. What a run that was. Oh, and it was nearly an own goal in the end. And Muller somehow will get the ball, surely. No, done. What an incredible incident that was. Well, it was a magnificent run by Alex Bruce. He, he beat three players, slid the ball into that ruck in the middle. Muller seemed to have it and then lost it again. It finally broke to Barry Dunn, who from just a few yards out couldn't get the ball on target. And Bristol City very lucky to get away with that. Here's Harford again. Whitehead. Now then, three men in the middle here, but the cross came off of Reardon. And Litchfield couldn't prevent it going behind for a corner although he feels he did. And the referee has glanced at his watch because we're now into time added on for stoppages. Could there be late drama? No, there won't, because the final whistle has blown and the boos and otherwise silence from this small crowd really, I think, underlining better than any words from me what's been a disappointing match. The chances, most of them fell to Preston North End and two of their new players, John Kelly and Barry Dunn, missed the best two of all.
Bristol City have got problems, Preston have two, but at least their new players might gel together and make the future a little brighter. The final score, Bristol City nil.